something happened in the research lab at the P4, all right? And they had a supercharged version of this where they took um, uh, bat SARS-like virus and they took SARS and they copy-pasted the virulent parts of this, of their genome, into a, a substrate uh, 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 and created a new genome that also tweaked it with HIV. Uh, the HIV component of the S protein, I looked at the genome uh, in the NIH database that was released from China. I was only doing it for fun because I, I took bioinformatics at, at, at Harvard and I was just doing it for fun. All right. So I went in and then when I, what I saw was the copy paste of, of, of you got to remember that this genome is 30 nucleotides long. 30,000 nucleotides long, okay? They, they copied bat SARS-like into the replicase. Bat SARS-like was good for the replicase part of it. So it could replicate, but it didn't have a good spike protein. So that's how cells can communicate is these, these receptors. We have receptors that, that take on uh, hormones or different chemicals and creates a whole downstream effect of, of processes. Well, viruses have learned over nat through natural selection uh, a way to connect to some of these, these receptors. They're brought into the cell and then they start using the cell machinery to replicate. Now, um, the, the, uh, so this, this spike protein is, is the key to the receptor, the receptor is the, the lock, if you want to look at it that way. Now, in terms of what happened, so I, I looked at the genome on January 25th and then on, on January 27th, and I saw that they took the best of both worlds, the, 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 the best of the replicase of about tw uh, 2,000 nucleotides and pasted it in. That's not zoonotic. Yeah, that, that's, the idea of that... That's, that's sort of the thousand monkeys typing Shakespeare, the idea that they, this right. replication of another uh, uh, RNA sequence would suddenly appear in this one, uh, almost per perfectly copied, as you say. This, you know, the odds of this arriving uh, from natural selection is like sort of a whirlwind going through a junkyard and assembling at 747. Exactly. And then they took the best for the spike protein from SARS and put it in, and then they tweaked it with the HIV. All right. It's not HIV. It's not HIV virus because HIV virus is a retrovirus. It has a different type of genome. It has different mechanisms. It uses uh, reverse transcriptase and it, 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 it integrates into your genome. And that's why HIV is so, it, it, it is such a problem to try to, to, to fight, to treat. But this is not, if, if you get COVID-19, you don't have HIV. And a lot of people think that. But what they, what they did was they understood that each amino acid either has a neutral charge, a positive charge, or a negative charge. Well, you have that, those amino acids for the, the lock or the receptor. So if you know the charges of the receptor, you can program the spike to lock in correctly, to have the right charges, the right charge topology to lock good. And that's what they did with the HIV homology. They changed the amino acids in such a way that it had the, the right positive charge to the negative charge on the, on the receptor of the ACE2. So, and we've had, then you look at the clinical side, you hear that there is a down, a, a, a down regulation of antigen presenting T cells. Well, that's your white blood cell count is going down. So that's, that, you know, does have that hint of AIDS. Well, and then, so, of course, you have this double whammy that you have an infection and, well, the white blood cells, which are designed to fight the infection, those numbers are going down. And this might be one of the reasons why it's so hard on people's system. Right, right. So, so okay, now, now around this time, is early February, we're... Three Indian researchers published a paper on Cold Spring Harbor's website, non-peer-reviewed website, but that's how a lot of this, you know, cutting-edge research is first, it's a white paper that's issued for comments, okay? And it showed how they, 
they, they, they looked at the Wuhan strand that was released by China. And I personally went into the NIH database and did to double check the research. And if you look at the genome that's, that's published for HIV-1, there's different types, but HIV-1, and you look at the protein sequence of, of GP120 and GAG, and you type in those, those uh, sequences, those inserts, and look at the, the uh, actual genome that's for Wuhan, you see it. And it's, it, so it's not like they, they, they did a, a false paper. Now you got to remember why, how there researchers... Was a, sorry to interrupt. There, there was a lot of pushback, because I remember reporting about this when it first came out. There was a lot of pushback. If I remember rightly, the paper was withdrawn. Do you know what the criticisms were of this identification? They said that the methodology was wrong. So, but the thing is, is if you, if you see the sequence and you see it, it for the spike protein that makes it more virulent, and there's four, there's four inserts, four separate inserts. It's not like, you know, uh, just a sequence. It's four targeted in there. The chances of that being zoonotic is low because it's one sequence I could say maybe zoonotic. Two sequences, eh, maybe. Three, four, then the probability becomes less and less, right? And these sequences are not just two amino acids matching. One, one is six, you know, another is like eight, you know, so that the chances and you, to make an amino acid, you need three nucleotides. So, and that's, you need three nucleotides plus another three nucleotides plus another three nucleotides to make up the six, the, 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 the six amino acid sequence. So the chances of it being zoonotic um, is very low on top of when you look at the copy pasting that took place with bat SARS like and SARS coronavirus. So this was definitely bioengineered and that's just looking at it from uh, bioinformatic. So you can look at it from three different ways. You can look at it from the bioinformatics. You can look at it from the probabilities, pure probability. It's very low. And then on top of it, it's right by a P4 facility where supposedly it was leaked, you know, by the, the fish market. You know, so the probability of all this being zoonotic is like 0. 0.00001 or less. The bioinformatic perspective, you can see the copy pasting, but then you can see the building through the research and how they were studying this in the, the bat host and try to make a virus that's, that, that, that goes under the radar of the immune system to be able to, to understand the biology, to speed up the research. So I understand why they did it. This is the big question. If it was engineered, why on earth would somebody want to create such a hellish virus? If it doesn't exist in nature, it's not like you're researching it to create some sort of vaccine or some sort of protection against it. I mean, is this not just, well, I don't even want to say it, but I mean, wouldn't this have significant military applications? There's a lot of ways to look at this. We can go down the very dark road or we can, hopefully it, it wasn't the dark road. I originally had the thought and, and the hope, and I, and I stress hope, that it was purely uh, scientific and that it was, it was leaked on accident. But you can have something that is scientific, going in the scientific pipeline, and then and then bifurcate and then have a dark operation going on. So they could have been building up this virus in 2010. And there is some evidence to, to your, to your point in around 2015 where it went dark op. And oh, so they developed something so, and the military were like, Ooh, that could be of use to us. Yeah. That's what I think happened. Through investigating the genome sequence, I found it significant that the S protein of the Wuhan coronavirus was critical in its cross-species ability to infect humans. While I was searching for related studies online, one Chinese virologist in particular caught my attention. She spent many years researching bats and coronaviruses. 
She was the first to locate the key to how coronaviruses can overcome cross-species barriers in order to directly infect human bodies. And she was the first to discover that the SARS virus was the result of a restructuring of multiple SARS-like coronaviruses found in bats. Her name is Shi Zheng Li, and she may be an important link to the origin of the virus. Wikipedia describes Shi Zheng Li as a, quote, Chinese virologist and researcher at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which is part of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Further investigations show that Shi Zheng Li has been a figure of controversy since the Wuhan virus outbreak. This is due to a paper she published in 2015 discussing her own research into synthetic viruses. Chai Xin, a media company with ties to the Chinese Communist Party, interviewed Shi Zheng Li in an attempt to refute these rumors. Dr. Zheng Li Shi is one of the top experts in China. Uh, studying about coronavirus uh, in Wuhan Institute of Virology. She has so many publications from uh, collecting, identify bad coronavirus from bad caves. Her lab has these capacities and very sophisticated capacity to generate mutations to make it best fit in human expression as well. Delving further into related information, I discovered that Shi Zheng Li published not one, but four papers in total each of which contains important information. Since the SARS outbreak in 2003, Shi Zheng Li has been conducting research on coronaviruses. From 2010 onward, the focus of Shi and her team was redirected to identifying the capacity for coronavirus transmission across species, specifically putting the spotlight on the S protein of the coronaviruses. In other words, her team's research in the Wuhan lab has been looking into the part that can make coronaviruses transmittable to humans. In June 2010, a team including Shi Zheng Li published a paper. It describes research to understand the susceptibility of angiotensin converting enzyme 2 ACE2 proteins of different bat species to the S protein of the SARS virus. In the experiments, they also modified key amino acid condoms to mutate the bat's ACE2 to examine compatibility with the SARS-S protein. This paper demonstrated their awareness of the special relationship between the S protein and the ACE2 receptor. It also signified that she had unearthed the passageway for coronaviruses into human bodies. In October 2013, she and her team published a paper in the authoritative science journal Nature. They claimed a breakthrough in coronavirus research. What was their breakthrough? They successfully isolated three viruses from bats, one of which had an S protein that integrated with human ACE2 receptors. This effectively demonstrated the human infection of SARS-like viruses to humans without the need of an intermediary host. Then, in November 2015, she and her team at the Wuhan lab once again published a paper, this time in the British journal Nature Medicine. They discussed the creation of a synthetic virus, a self-replicating chimeric virus. This virus had the SARS virus as the framework, with the key S protein replaced by the one they had found in a bat coronavirus she mentioned in her 2013 paper. This new virus demonstrated a powerful ability for cross-species infection. The mice infected with this synthetic virus revealed severe lung damage with no cure. This symbolized that Xi's successful splicing of the SARS virus was a key to open the door to the cross-species transmission. What is startling is that these successful experiments on mice were only the tip of the iceberg. They planned to further experiment on primates. Although Shi Zhengli did not indicate any conclusion from this research, her move to research on primates suggests this was to more closely simulate the infection of humans with this new synthetic virus. This wasn't done without controversy, however. Shi's experiments quickly triggered widespread debates from the academic community. Simon Wayne Hobson, 
of the Pasteur Institute in France expressed deep concerns. He told Nature, if the new virus escaped, nobody could predict the trajectory. Propagation could happen anywhere. His statement is exactly what's happening, that the virus is everywhere. Additional studies very strongly support the idea that this new coronavirus came from a recombination event. However, this did not terminate Xi's research. On November 14, 2018, Xi Jingli spoke at the School of Life Sciences and Biotechnology at Shanghai Jiao Tong University. The topic was bat coronavirus and its cross-species infection. Reports of this event have since been deleted from the university website. I discovered two more significant pieces of information regarding the dangers of the research conducted by Xi Zhengli's team. First, on October 16, 2014, the Obama administration Wary of the potential threats to public health from the gain-of-function GOF research into SARS, MERS, or influenza, announced through the National Institute of Health that it was suspending funding into similar research. The funding pause included Xi Jingli's research project, Genetic Engineering of SARS-like Coronavirus in Bats, a collaborative effort with Dr. Ralph Barrick, a virologist at the University of North Carolina. Second. After the Wuhan outbreak, Indian researchers compared the S protein sequence between 2019 NCOV and SARS. They discovered that 2019 NCOV had four new sequences inserted, all of which can be found in HIV sequences through a search on GenBank. Shi Zhengli discredited those observations, although she never denied the existence of the four inserted sequences. However, scientists probing GenBank found that there were only three viruses containing all sequences. The first is the HIV virus itself. The second is a bat coronavirus discovered by Xi. And the third is this new Wuhan coronavirus. We've done this kind of work for now 40 years for me. There's the sequence analysis and, and comparison of the virus of the SARS-2 COVID-19 apparently has genes that come from other human and other species, including some envelope, the GP41 from HIV. What is the HIV's GP41? The answer I found online describes GP41 as a protein of HIV that acts as the key to infecting human bodies, resulting in the functional failure of the immune system. If the discovery by Judy and her colleagues are established, it would mean the infectious part of the Wuhan virus, the S protein, incorporated the sequence of the HIV key protein. This made me think of the immunodeficiency symptoms in people infected. They were doing research on a human transmittable coronavirus that was actually published in a paper. So this is research that they actually published. They were working on developing a coronavirus for the human host, which you know leads you to question, why would you be creating a coronavirus that can infect humans? What would be the purpose of that research? Is it, is it for a weapon? Is it so that you can then create a vaccine that you are the sole recipient of the profits from. The Chinese have full access to our databases. They have full access to all that research that comes out. They have full access to all our universities to train their scientists. And they have full access to our scientists, like was, you know, with the recent indictment of the uh, head of the chemistry department at Harvard. I mean, this is the Thousand Talents program. Tens of thousands of, of, the, most, uh, of the world's most brightest people in all of these different um, areas that are going to China to help them with their programs. And all of these programs, as you know, have a dual-use capability. 